Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It is that time of the month, time for our monthly Q&A. This is a two-part series that we do once a month. And this is part one. Tim asked the question or asked four questions a few days ago now. And we got about 200 questions <laughs> about, about the GeForce RTX 20 series. So apologies that that's going to be uh, pretty much what both of the videos are about, I think. I don't know if we have any other... It's mostly that, yeah. Mostly. It's mostly that. So hopefully that's what you guys all want to hear about. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, first question. We're starting with a serious question from the crazy old coot. Are they going to include a jar of Vaseline for each RTX 20 series card? <laughs> Not even sure how to answer that one. Um, uh, probably be appropriate too. I'm sure they could afford to, considering the prices. Gee, it'd be nice to get some limited edition green video. Vaseline. Yeah, that'd be nice. <laughs> very useful. Ah, uh, very good. Okay, Ashen One asks: The RTX 2080 has fewer CUDA cores than the GTX 1080 Ti, so which card will put out the most FPS? <laughs> okay, well, I knew we'd probably get a question like this to start off with. Uh, yeah, well, obviously it's a difficult question to answer because we haven't been able to test them yet. That's probably why you're asking. Uh, as we said in the announcement video, uh, for games that we have available right now, and probably the games that are sort of coming up in the very near future, it seems unlikely that the 2080 would be able to beat the 1080 Ti. Uh, as you said, there's few, fewer CUDA cores, and while that isn't everything, we're not expecting a big or really any leap with Turing's IPC performance. Uh, and it, really it comes down to, I suppose, whether they can take advantage of the RT and or tensor cores to yep. improve performance that way. Again, I don't think they'll be doing that for the games that we currently have available, all the games in the near future, but you never know, and that's why we need to test them. All right, another... RTX related question. Uh, where do you see the future of ray tracing headed? Is it just another uh, NVIDIA physics and hair works? Or do you see this happening on AMD cards and consoles in the future? Uh, what do you reckon, Tim? Yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting because I think ray tracing has always been sort of like the gold standard for lighting in <laughs> games. So I think the industry has always been working towards ray tracing, but just it's incredibly computationally intensive. So it's very, very difficult for cards that don't have the sort of new RT cores that Turing has to sort of accelerate those features. So I think we're definitely moving towards getting these accelerated, you know, hardware specific blocks in to do these sort of features in new cards like Turing. So I definitely think there'll be more and more games coming out that support ray tracing. As for whether or not it'll be a physics or hairworks thing, I think it's probably probably more likely to be used than physics or hair oh, works yeah. Yeah. Um, simply because it's the best way to do lighting whereas you know physics and hair works are additions to effects that are already in games and I think definitely AMD will be working on you know their own uh, ray tracing acceleration sort of things that they can put in their next generation GPU architecture so we'll definitely be getting that and I also think it's important to, to note as well that things like RTX which is the group of technologies that allows NVIDIA to do ray tracing that's not in itself a GameWorks feature. It actually mm. sits below what's known as DXR or DirectX ray tracing. So a game that just simply supports DirectX ray tracing will be able to use RTX. It doesn't need GameWorks on top of it. Of yep. course, NVIDIA also has their own GameWorks ray tracing features. Yep. So there'll be that layer on top, but in general, RTX will operate below DirectX. So yeah, it certainly is a very interesting time to get ray tracing in games because it has the potential to be, you know, very visually impressive. Yep. But unfortunately, I think this first generation will be a pretty massive performance hit for now. It's, it's, it still seems fair way in the future. Yeah, and it's an expensive first step. Yeah, very expensive. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely, though, very excited to see ray tracing. Do you think RTX is a stab at AMD's RX name? <laughs> Um, I don't think so, no, but probably a, a happy coincidence for NVIDIA there. What do you reckon? Yeah, definitely not intentional. No. But yeah. Funny. It is quite funny how similar they do sound, though. All these names are similar. Well, yeah, they're just blurring into one at this point. Yep. Okay, so RCF asks, this is a very interesting question, a card having lower gig arrays per second and RTX ops results in a decrease in sharpness and overall quality of the reflections and refractions of the light or will it result in an actual FPS performance drop? I assume that's what he's asking. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, I think for stars, I think ray tracing will be restricted to cars that just can support it. So, you know, Pascal, you won't even be able to enable it. But yeah. definitely, you know, we've seen that the you know 2080 Ti will have more giga rays per second than the 2060. <laughs> so that'll be interesting. And I 20, think... 2070? 2070, yeah. sorry, the 2070. Carry I haven't on. heard about the 2060 <laughs> yet, it's have gonna, we? Uh, I'm going to say 10, 1080, 1070 yeah, so much. And, yeah, or G, Actually, GTX rather than RTX. Yeah, anyway, so we'll, carry have to, on. we'll have to perfect our names for this yeah, next generation. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think there'll definitely be some sort of scalers and slidings that you can, you know, enable in games to sort of change the amount of rays that it's either using so, or yeah. change the, you know, sharpness and quality. Similar to current, you know, shadow settings, usually you just increase the shadow resolution, it'll be probably pretty similar to that. Of course, all of the ray tracing in games will be hybrid rendering along with traditional rasterization, so it won't always it won't ever be fully ray traced, mm. but it'll just probably change the percentage of ray tracing versus rasterization. But it's really hard to say because we haven't tested the games and haven't seen the settings that they use, but yeah, certainly it'll probably probably end up with both actually, both in performance hit and quality settings depending on Well, it's not even clear if we'll have anything to test when they're yeah, released. Yeah, that's right. So yeah, it's hard to say at the moment, but yeah, I think it'll be a pretty typical effect sort of mm -hmm. thing. Yep. Next question, what type of CPU do you think will be necessary to avoid bottlenecking an RTX graphics card? Uh, we're probably talking about the 2080 Ti here. Um, I don't think it'll be too different to what we have now, to be honest, because as we talked about in an earlier question, the RTX 2080 Ti, that's going to be the flagship model, of course, and it's not well, potentially not a great deal faster than the 1080 Ti. Can't imagine it's going to blow it out of the water. And most people will be gaming at 4K, uh, so they'll be GPU bound there. Uh, and of course, if they're using ray tracing, if that's enabled, then yep. uh, the CPU is going to be the least of your worries. But I would say anything like a 6-core Ryzen 5 CPU, 8-core Ryzen 7, uh, or any 6-core Intel Coffee Lake CPU, probably the Core i7s as we move forward. I don't know. Hyper-threading yeah. will probably become somewhat necessary there for your 12 threads. But yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll be too much different on the CPU front. Of course, I'm very keen to test it out, but I think with the CPUs that are acceptable for gaming now will work perfectly fine with the 2080 Ti. Okay, next question is, what do you think will there be a difference in FPS from Pascal on non-RTX mode? And if yes, how much should we expect? So I'm guessing that you're talking about the difference between Pascal and Turing when ray tracing is not yeah. uh, enabled. Um, I mean, we talked a lot about that in our announcement video, sort of discussing what we know from the specs and stuff. And it's it's pretty hard to say because you know Nvidia hasn't given a whole lot of their own mm. performance numbers, mostly focusing on talking about ray tracing, you know, their new all sorts of deep learning and AI type stuff. So yeah, it's hard to say, but we're expecting modest to small gains um, over Pascal. Yeah, I think I can't recall exactly. I think it was around 20%. I was talking for the most part. So. Yeah, so that's probably around around the mark. And of course, ray tracing will either simply not work on Pascal or will absolutely destroy <laughs> the card. So yeah. it's probably not worth even comparing that sort of thing. I think basically either case it won't work. So yeah. All right. Here's a good question for you, Steve. Should I buy the 1070 Ti or wait for the 2070? <laughs> uh, good question. Uh, how do I answer this one? Uh, well, I suppose... All right, let's start with some facts here. The The 2070 has an MSRP of $500 US for the partner cards and it was $600 US for the FE model. Uh, we seriously don't recommend buying the FE model if you can help it because it's not going to be worth $100 US, but at times you might have to buy that because it'll be the only option. Uh, and then right now, the GTX 1070 Ti, that's coming in about $450 US on Newegg, Amazon, all the major retailers. So that's... That's only a $50 US saving. Uh, but second hand, so if you're really looking at getting a bargain, uh, you can get the 1070 Ti's second hand on eBay for about $300 US. And that's not like a, you got really lucky. That's kind of like a, that's yeah, the average asking yeah. price. So pretty easy to get one at that price. Um, in reality, the 2070 will probably be difficult to get for the $500 MSRP. You're probably looking at, I would say for the first few months, $600 US. Um, some of the models might even cost more than that. We really don't know, but based on how availability goes with these things, that yeah. seems to be about right. Very similar with Pascal. 
yeah, so realistically, you're probably looking at spending $600 US uh, if you want to get one before Christmas. So that being the case, I would definitely be getting a 1070 Ti secondhand, because as I said, the average selling price is $300. I even saw some uh, buy now ones the other day for like 280 US. So I'd be jumping all over that. Uh, unless you're absolutely desperate or something like that to get a card and you don't want to buy secondhand, then maybe get a new 1070 Ti. Hard to say on that one. Actually, if you're looking at buying new, I would just get a GTX 1080 because they're the exact same price as the 1070 Ti's at the moment. So probably skip Turing. I would get a secondhand 1070 Ti or a brand new GTX 1080 if I was if I couldn't wait like yeah. three, four weeks till the reviews come out and reevaluate then. So anyway, I hope that short answer addresses your question. So random dude walking down the street asks, what are your thoughts about AMD cards not selling well even when they are competitive? And then goes on to give a few examples like people buying a GTX 1063 gig uh, or GTX 1050 Ti compared to the RX 470 and RX 480, which were around the same price. Hmm, okay. I, I've actually considered making a video about this a few times, uh, but I haven't had a seriously good think about it. Uh, it's an unfortunate situation for sure, but who do you blame for this? Um, you know, I see the media getting blamed all the time because I suppose they're paid off by NVIDIA. I don't know. Uh, you know, dumb gamers get blamed all the time as well. But, I mean, is that legitimate? <sighs> who? I don't. It's a tough one to answer. I think ultimately you could only blame AMD or NVIDIA. So you could blame NVIDIA for dodgy, dirty business tactics, or I don't know if you can call them business, well, they are business tactics, aren't they? They do it to generate sales, the various things they've done in the past, or AMD for not countering those things as well as possibly they could have. Uh, I don't know, what do you think on this matter? Yeah, I think a part of it comes down to, you know, just simply NVIDIA having a lot more market share. Even though, we do reviews and we analyze all the performance and we could quite easily say some AMD cards are better value than NVIDIA cards. A lot of people out there that are buying these cards aren't reading reviews. They're just going on, you know, what what can I buy with my money that I've got? You know, what are my mates using? You know, what are my favorite Twitch streamers using or whatever? And when NVIDIA has so much market share, it kind of just, yeah, you just buy what you, your mates have. So. And people will argue that, they got that market share from Dirty Tactics. So, I mean, you can't blame Dirty yeah, yeah. Tactics on reviewers or gamers. And a, a perfect example would be uh, like the GTX 1060 versus the RX 580. They're both great cards for your... Well, they're supposed to be around 250. They, they both sim both should be selling at a similar price. They offer similar performance. There's It's really hard to pick between the two. You could say free sync. I'll go with AMD, yeah. but then Pascal's a bit more efficient, runs a bit cooler, overclocks a little bit better, certainly easier to overclock. So it's pretty difficult to pick between those two. And with AMD, uh, sorry, NVIDIA already having the majority of the market share, as you say, it's not like tons of people are going to go, oh, I have to get the RX 580 because it's so much better. It's a way better deal. So they're not, it's hard to claw back market share when you're offering something that's just as good. Yeah, and I think AMD's run into a, a lot of issues whenever they have, like, you know, that killer product that's better value. Like, I, I remember that, you know, RX 580 or RX 480, was it, with the 4 gig versus yeah. uh, 8 gig? And everyone was saying, you know, at that price point, the 4 gig model was really good value, but you just simply couldn't. They stuffed find up. One. They stuffed up the yeah. RX 480. And then, they made a big deal about it being a $200 card, but it turns out that the 8 gigabyte model that everyone was reviewing and getting wasn't. Yeah. That was 240 or something like that. And it's only a $40 difference, but it completely killed the value aspect of it. Yeah, and, you know, they very quickly have run into mining issues, not just with those cards, but also back when they're, they're really competitive stuff, like the i9-290. Mm. Um, you know, just mining would come and just everyone would buy AMD cards for that. So, yeah, yeah they tend to run into those sort of problems, unfortunately. So, yeah, it's a very complicated... E I think Question. there's there's, there's no reasons. there's no one answer where it's just it's a hundred percent that there's multiple reasons for why things have happened the way they have. 
All right, Andy S13 asks, do you reckon the launch price of the 2060 and 2050 will be more in line with that of the 1060 and 1050 since they will be spared the RTX treatment? Even more important, will the GT 2030s ship with TDR4 memory? <laughs> uh, well, I hope we don't see any more dodgy sort of business practices with those low end graphics cards, but let's be honest, we probably will. Yeah. What do you reckon? Yeah. yeah. I think we. Well, we hopefully we won't, but we yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, as probably the more important part of the question, what was it? The twenty sixty and twenty fifty. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, they're definitely not going to be RTX cards, although it hasn't been officially said, but it's pretty likely. It's pretty likely. Uh, so they're going to be much smaller GPUs. That being the case, because they shouldn't have RT cores, Tensor cores. Don't yep. know. Hard to say. But given that they will be smaller GPUs, the pricing should be more in line with what we're used to seeing for those lower end sort of entry level to mid tier cards. Yeah, especially because AMD's most competitive products are around the sort of 2060, 2050 range. And they still have to compete with yeah, AMD there. Still have to so. compete there. Don't have to compete as much on the high end so they can get away with a bit more ridiculous pricing. But certainly in that range, I would expect it to be more in line with what we've seen in the past. Definitely. All right, next question. Since NVIDIA revealed 2080 Ti early, do you think the next, or do you think next year we're going to see seven nanometer GPU from NVIDIA, maybe RTX refresh with affordable prices? Ah, nice to dream, isn't it? Uh, well, towards the end of my, what was it, my RTX announcement video, I pretty much said something along those lines. Uh, to add to that, I think we would uh, see a similar situation to what we did with maybe the GTX 480. That was replaced by the GTX 580 like eight to nine months after it was first introduced. So I'm not saying we'll see the exact sort of situation as that, but I expect that before too long, we will have the seven nanometer parts and they'll pretty much make the GeForce 20 series obsolete because they should offer everything the GeForce 20 series offers plus a really not well a really big improvement in efficiency and performance. Great White Shadow asks, I was waiting for the new GPUs, but now wondering if I should get something to bridge the gap to the next one. Don't laugh, but my current GPU is a Radeon 7870. I'm planning a new system build in the somewhat near future. Is a 1080 Ti worth it, 607 US now, or do I just get something like a 1066 gig for okay. 285 US? Well, it sounds like you're the perfect candidate for the secondhand GTX 1070 Ti that we spoke of earlier. I wouldn't even waste your time bidding or anything like that. I mean, you can try and get a bargain, but for $300 US, I'd just hit the buy now and snap one of them up. Yep. Uh, coming from your Radeon, what was it, 7870? Yep. That's going to be just... Uh, a, a huge improvement. A massive upgrade. I mean, honestly, a GTX 1080 Ti is probably going to be overkill. Uh, I don't know what CPU you have, but in any case, from what you're coming from, to a 1070 Ti, uh, you're just not going to know what's going on as yeah. it is. Like it's just going to be a completely different world of gaming. You just you're going to love the upgrade. Yeah, better bang for your buck in that sort of product here, and then three hundred dollars second hand. You can't beat that right now, really. Yeah, it's pretty good. Um, you, there might be some other second hand options that are as good, but three hundred dollars for a 1070 Ti is just awesome. Okay, I think that's about all the GeForce RTX questions we can handle for now, and probably the same for you guys watching. Hope you enjoyed part one of this month's Q&A, and part two will be on the channel at the same time tomorrow. So, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, follow us on Patreon if you want to get our monthly live stream, which we just did, and that was a lot of fun. Yeah, that's awesome. And yeah, that's going to do it for this one. So, thanks for watching. I'm your host, Steve. What's your name? Oh, I'm Tim. That's Tim. <laughs> See you next time.